how was the beating against Skip Bayless? Well, what was interesting about it for me, and I haven't done it now in like 13 years, was I misunderstood who I was dealing with. And so I thought that he would find it refreshing that he had a real challenge in front of him. Now, no, 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 no. That's not that's 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 not it. That's not it. That's a man that thinks he's won every debate he's ever been in, yeah. right? Um, and so the first couple times I did the show, I was doing it wrong because I'm not particularly confrontational. It's just not like in terms of how I, you know, the back and forth and stuff like that. It's not really how I do. And so they want confrontation. They want that collision. And uh, we had one day I was there. I tell the story not too often, but I was there and somebody sent a text. I think it was Derek Brooks. that sent a tweet in and asked Skip Bayless who his toughest opponent to debate was. He was like, oh, easy, Greg Anthony. And I was kind of joking. I'm like, yo, Skip, I'm right here, baby. He was like, Greg Anthony. I was like, okay. You know, and I'm like, look, I'm not trying to come in this man's TV show, turn it over tables, like fighting him. Like that was my thought the whole way. Like I ain't trying to do all that. But that day I decided to. And I wore his ass out, just top to bottom. Like, there was just kind of, like, I was wearing his ass out on hood shit. Like, I was wearing his out on, like, high-minded stuff. I was wearing him out on sports stuff. Like, I just came in there dropping blows. That man ain't say a word to me, and they didn't call me again to come debate with Skip Bayless. Um, and so the tricky thing about doing that with Skip is, if you're not somebody that knows him very well, he's not really talking with you. He's so locked in personally. Like, this means something different to him than it means to other people. And yeah. he's so locked into whatever it is that he's doing that you're not going to get a lot of interaction. And then if what you say to him is not something he expected or he can rock with, this whole thing is just going to shut down. You were you were very complimentary to Skip earlier this year when um, you were with on uh, House of Strauss. And at the time, not many people were complimentary of Skip because it was shortly after the DeMar Hamlin tweet and, and some of his blowups with, with Shannon Sharp. Um, did you... And I'm also kind of surprised that after after knowing that Skip stopped calling you back to first take, that you're still complimentary of his ability to to be on TV and, and host a debate show, even though it's like he he says he he wins every, every debate, but he doesn't necessarily want somebody that he can't that he, he can't beat in a debate yeah. on, on with him like that. That seems kind of um I, I, w- I would think that you'd be a little bit more critical of him basically after that. Yeah, but I mean, that does not change how good he is at doing a television show in that format. So like one, the DeMar Hamlin tweet, everybody else was wrong. Skip was not. Every single person that came and brought that hammer down on Skip was wrong. That was the ridiculous outrage machine of social media looking for somebody to gang up on and they found the guy to gang up on and it was skip bayless now the the argument against skip in that case is that he is a professional communicator and he did not communicate in a way that was very clear to everybody and maybe you could say that that was his fault but all he was saying was the same thing i could have said the same exact thing skip said and people wouldn't have brought it to me because people don't feel the way about me that they feel about skip which is very simply they can't keep playing this game. However, they can't stop this game. What in the world are they to do? What's this, you know, what's this going to be? And I think that people assume that just because Skip can be a bit of a jerk that he's like some kind of callous bad dude, which is absolutely 100% not the case about him from my experience with him. Before I did first take with him, and when we both worked at page two, we would, he would email. He was always very, very nice to me and all of those things. But no matter how it is that I feel about him personally, that does not change the fact that you ain't never seen that man stutter on television not once. Like, say what you want about Skip, but if you're going to do the kind of television that he does, what makes him so good is that he takes a very strong and clear position every time, and you know exactly where it is that he's coming from. You may not agree with what he says, but there is no confusion or mystery about what he was talking about. I'll give you another example of somebody very, very good on television that people think that just because they don't like him that they're not good at television. Jay Mariotti on Around the Horn. You go back and watch those clips of Mariotti. There's a reason they were putting him on television every day. The man spoke clearly. The man never stammered, and you knew exactly where he was coming from no matter what the topic was. And that's how I feel about Skip. And so for me, no, I will never have a problem saying what's true about somebody. And, you know, that's what it is with him. There are all kinds of negative things. If you want to say them about Skip, you can. But ain't nobody putting him on television as a favor. 
he is a legitimate pioneer for the journalist trying to figure out how to turn himself into somebody bigger than their newspaper, bigger than their publication, and then make the transition into doing his television stuff. Skip is one of the rare people who ever truly mattered at ESPN. And what I mean by mattered is Jamie Horowitz comes in, looks at the ratings of cold pizza at the time, or first take at the time, and is like, yo, the ratings spike when Skip's on. The whole show should be Skip. This network doesn't do that for people very often, right? They're not telling anybody that you to start. But there was no other option with him because it was so clear, because he really is that good at this. So why do you think people are always so quick to to try to pile on? Is it because he he says that he never loses a debate? Nah, is, it, is it because some of the, the brash comments that he's yeah. made over the years? Oh, yeah, yeah. He's a bit insufferable. <laughs> like, like, I mean, I'm not going to pretend as though insufferability is not part of it. But and he's an easy target, and he takes it. You know, like, he'll come on. Like, one thing about it, you don't hear Skip complain that much about the way people are mean to him. Yeah. You know, he's... My from my experience with him and from talking to other people, he does find it a bit confusing that he's the one guy that everybody comes down on um, in that way. But, no, he is an incredibly, incredibly easy target. And it's like the thing that everybody can get, you know, can get together on is how much they don't like Skip. I'm just not one of those people.